Hey, what's going on? Luke here, and we're here to do another video talking about the NRL. This time, we're talking about fullbacks, and I'm going to be giving my top five fullbacks of the NRL. Now, I just want to start this video off by saying that, look, generally, we can all kind of agree that there's a couple of players who are like the top one or two, Minya Tedesco, Silvasha Shex, we know they're all good, but the rest of them, we, we can kind of uh, sort of look at, you know, three or four or five, whatever. You can all sort of interchange the numbers um, or interchange players. There's you know, there's a lot of good fullbacks in the NRL these days. I actually feel like fullback position might be one of the strong positions. Now, I know for a little while it was kind of, you know, you had your Billy Slaters, Brett Stewart, that sort of stuff, but some of the others, there was like a big drop in quality. Where I feel like at the moment, there's there actually is a big range of fullbacks that are really, really good. Now, on this list, it's going to be guys like Gutherson, not included. Guys like Brimson, he's not in the list. Even guys like Latrell Mitchell, who have made like a recent change to fullback, they're not in the list. And then you're adding guys like your Joey Manus and stuff who will fill in, they can do a decent job at fullback as well. So I actually feel like there's quite a bit of depth in the fullback position these days, which I think is a good thing. There's not too many clubs that are seeking out fullback, so uh, look, it does make the, the list hard to make in terms of a top five, and I feel like a lot of people take these videos to heart. So look, I just wanna say, if there's your favorite players not included, if, if your favorite player is Gutho, that's fine. Look, he's still a very, very good player. I just don't have him on my top five list. In saying that though, I think it's time to get into my actual list. So starting at number five, we're starting off with Caelan Ponga. Now at the time of recording this, he's not the Newcastle captain, but there's a lot of talk that he's gonna be taking over the captaincy from Mitchell Pierce. Obviously a lot of off-field scandals for Pierce, but Caelan Ponga seems like a great choice for it. Uh, I'm not sure in terms of how much leadership he actually offers on the field, but we know at fullback, he's at least gonna to have to be vocal. So it does make sense to make your fullback the captain. Like I said, they're gonna be very vocal in terms of organizing the defense. So may as well organize the whole team. And also Ponga, he's the highest paid player at the club, I'm pretty sure. So he's already got a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. So it does make sense. Uh, now having him at number five, I feel like a lot of people will look at that and be like, well, he hasn't really offered too much. I mean, he's playing in a night side that hasn't really done a lot. Brimson just came in to, for Queensland and done a great job. Um, we've had also other people come into the fullback role. I mean, Corey Allen literally played fullback and they won the game for Queensland. So although Ponga is such a great talent, there has been times where he's sort of shown that he's still lacking a little bit of maybe maturity. I don't know if that's the right word, but he's still lacking a little bit to make it to like a full elite status but he's still a very, very good player. He's shown enough for me to be a top five fullback, especially his like debut game um, in State of Origin. He came off the bench, they chucked him in the forwards essentially, and he did did a great job. Now, I feel like Ponga, he's just like waiting for that launch pad to just go off. And I did a video recently talking about Jaden Braley, um, pretty much being a new signing for the Knights. I can really see Caleb Ponga taking off for the Knights. And if he does take off, I think this is a big, big danger for the rest of the NRL. Um, we've already seen just like the raw talent of Caleb Ponga, but just the fact if, if his actual team can get it together instead of him having to carry them, I think the NRL would be in for a big, big shock with the Knights. Uh, in saying that though, it is going to take a lot more help around him. But I don't think you can deny Caleb Ponga is at least a fantastic talent. Like He's like a 10 out of 10 talent at least. Um, it's just more of ability on the field. He is capable of playing like an 11 out of 10 game. It's just, he's also capable of playing a four out of 10 game. So it's just a matter of just getting that consistency because he's essentially getting paid like a guy who's gonna take the nice little premiership, he's gonna take him to the glory. He's gonna play those eight out of 10 games every single game and not just have those super high games and those super low games. Um, Cause that's what he's at at the moment. We definitely know he's capable of playing great. Uh, but he also has a few injuries in him as well, which I think has hampered his career so far. But we all know what his like, potential is. We know his ceiling super high, but in terms of ability, that's what we're rating them on right now. And I still think Ponga has enough skill within him to be in this number five positions. Cause well, like I said, there's a lot of good fullbacks. Um, you got your Nicole Clodstads and stuff that I didn't even mention earlier. So there's a lot of fullbacks that could have been in this list, but I still think Ponga, just purely on talent alone, he's at that number five position. Next up, we have Tom Trevojevic from the Manly Warringah Seagulls. Now this guy's been talked about ever since he was like 16, 17. He's been an absolute star of the game. And right from the get-go, he was that superstar. He was really, really good. Um, came into Manly on the wing, moved to fullback once Brett Stewart was ready to go, and hit the ground running. He's been fantastic. It's kind of a shame that not a shame, but we have guys like James Tedesco, Papenhausen and stuff who can play fullback as well. But it's also good that Chaboyevic is quite versatile and can play in other positions. Like I said, start off on the wing, plays for New South Wales in the center position. Uh, although New South Wales do play a lot of guys out of position, but Chaboyevic is one that has actually excelled at center. And I feel like he's a guy who just excel in any position. He's that good. 
It's out that I do have him at four because uh, I do think there's a couple guys, not necessarily better, but have put together better seasons. Um, I was talking about Ponga being such a talent. Chaboyevich is every bit the same. Um, kind of different in the sense I feel like Chaboyevich, he is fast and all that, but he's not like steppy. He's, he's kind of, he's got the power about him, but he doesn't look powerful, which is kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, Ponga, Chaboyevich, very different players, but very similar in the sense that we know what they're capable of. We know they're capable of playing 10 out of 10 games, 11 out of 10, just out of this world. In terms of Tom Jorovic too, we also know that he's got some injuries in him. Now, I think he's been a lot more consistent than Kalen Ponga, and I feel like he's uh, just a little bit better in general than Kalen Ponga at this stage in their careers, but he does have the injuries. So it was kind of hard to rent these guys, but I did put Jorovic ahead of him just because I feel like He's just played better games overall in the NRL, but Callum Pong is not far behind him. And there's, like I said, a whole bunch of other fullbacks who aren't that far behind them. But Tom Trevojevic, I think he's capable of going, if he actually has like a full season where he's not getting injured, not pulling a hemi. And like I said, hamstrings are so, they're kind of like career killers, man. We saw Kieran Foran go from being the best 5'8 in the game to being kind of just another 5'8. Like we always, we know Kieran Foran's good. We know he's capable of doing it. But in the sense, like, we know, oh, he's going to put a couple of games together and he's going to get injured. That's almost what he's getting to be with Tom Trebojevic. But the fact that I have him as high as number four really says it all about his talent at this point. But he is super young and he doesn't want to get any more sort of leg injuries because um, I feel like it's really going to hamper his career. And also, he's on such a big salary that if he's injured, Manly are stuffed. Manly are absolutely screwed for the season. Uh, not even salary point. It's just that he's the fullback. You can cover guys in the fullback position for a little bit, but you need them there when it comes to the big, the crunch time. When it comes to the finals, you need them there. If Tom Trebojevic is not there, Manly are no chance. doesn't matter if Cherry Evans is in the form of his life. It's not happening. So, yeah, they need to, they need to sort things out with Tom Trebojevic in terms of injuries. But at this point, I would say he's at least a top five fullback. And number three, this is an interesting one. This is where you toss up the guys who have the natural talent, the guy like Tom Trebojevic, the guys like uh, like like Latrell Mitchell, Callum Ponga, those sort of guys. The guys you can obviously see they've got talent. They got the speed. They just got the physical aspects of it. But here is a guy who doesn't necessarily have that sort of stuff apart from speed, and that's Ryan Puppenhausen from the Melbourne Storm. Now, he's done a lot of work. Uh, look, he definitely wasn't the first choice fullback at times um, in his tenure at the Melbourne Storm, but he is now, and he's just come off the back of a Clough Churchill. Uh, in terms of the Melbourne Storm winning the Premiership last year. And it was absolutely fantastic. And even little moments that didn't really feel like a lot at the time. But because of how much of a mismatch it was at times in that grand final, Melbourne Storm got out to such a lead. But they were able to hold that lead because Ryan Pappenhausen was producing some really, really good plays. Uh, we look at that one where he knocked the ball back in off the penalty. There's just little things that could have changed the game, swung the momentum a little bit earlier. Because we saw once, once Penrith got on momentum, they were absolutely firing. And they came back and they got within a whisker and winning that game, despite being so far behind. Uh, and honestly, I really no point in the game did I think the Storm are actually going to lose it. But just in the sense that if Pappenhausen didn't, if he slacked off, which a lot of players would at that point, you're 20 nil up, whatever it was, 24 nil up. You've got the game once the grand final. Who gives a shit? Just celebrate the game. You know, you're getting into the game. You just won. You just He literally just scored the first try of the second half. I mean, the coaches always talk about, you know, got to score the first try of the second half and um, wrap up the game. And that's what they did. And he, in fact, he was the one who actually scored it off the scrum. Just afterburners on him, straight through, he was gone. And the fact that the effort plays were still there, I think it says a lot about Ryan Pappenhausen. Also, the fact that he was never the first choice player, I think it really adds to the story of Pappenhausen. It was always going to be Drinkwater going to the full position. Then he got injured. Then Jerome Hughes was going to jump in. And at half back there, Chuck and Rolling Jacks, whatever. But Pappenhausen literally forced himself into that side. Just through pure just desire. Coming off the bench, I mean, I still remember that try. I don't remember who was it against, but the first sort of memory I have of Pappenhausen was a try where he jumped in a dummy half, ran through, threw a dummy or whatever it was, and just literally ran through and scored untouched. And that was the first incident of Ryan Pappenhausen being an absolute superstar, and he hasn't looked back since then. Uh, I was listening to his bloke in a bar episode, and he's, he's very humble, doesn't really talk about himself too much. Uh, I think he even says, like, I don't really remember a game where I played really, really well. But obviously, the grand final, he definitely did that. Clive Churchill, well-deserved. Also, number three, I think it's well-deserved because you look at uh, Pongans and you look at Chipoyevich's and stuff. I think overall, they probably are a better fullback. You look at them, you look at their, like, just their actual genetics. You look at their overall build. 
what they can do on the field. I think they actually are a better fullback. But little puppy, he just has that X factor about him. He just has that likability about him. And he just has something different. He just suits that Storm system perfectly. And like I said, although he doesn't have the physical abilities, he's got that speed and that's what matters. And even in the modern day, in terms of having all the big boppers and uh, the big physical guys who can step and palm and push off wires and all that sort of stuff, I still find it funny or just interesting the fact that Pappenhausen is still so effective. It's still so good in that Storm system. And... Probably would have excelled in that New South Wales system too. Um, it's actually a shame he didn't play for New South Wales. But Pappenhausen, an absolute superstar. And I think he thoroughly deserves the number three spot. Despite not having the sort of physical prowess of the number four and five. And having all the sort of, um, you know, junior recognition, that sort of stuff. It's just, it's a great story, the whole Pappenhausen story in terms of coming from nothing essentially. And building his way up. Because at least Tom Trebojevic and, and that sort of stuff. They, they were always guys who were talked about since they were playing like under 20s and that, where Pupnausen seemed to just come from nowhere, which is all of a sudden he was on the Storm bench and then, you know, and then he's then he's killing it and then he's starting and all of a sudden he's, he's winning a grand final with him. That, that's kind of what it felt like. I feel like he's also got that cult status as well. He's got a great following. Uh, even the whole little puppy um, nickname, that sort of stuff. It's just everything about Pappenhausen is great and I just love him and I'm glad that he's number three. Now I feel like going into number one and two, I feel like it's pretty obvious who I'm going to be picking. At number two, I'm going to be picking Roger Torvasa Shek. And a couple of years ago, he won the Dali and Medal. I don't know if it was deserved the Dali and Medal, but he's the first Kiwi to win the Dali and Medal. I feel like he's gone from strength to strength since then. Um, I feel like if he played for a Sydney side, if he was still playing at the Roosters, he'd be talked about in the same breath as Tedesco. But just the fact that he plays for the New Zealand Warriors, at the moment, it's kind of like I feel like it's kind of like a pity party for the Warriors. They look at them and they say, oh, well, you know, they're doing quite well. They're away from home and a whole lot of Tuvasa Sheks. Captaincy is just, you know, it's, it's impeccable. It's, it's so good. He's leading them so well, despite them not making the eight and that. But I feel like if you actually look at his performances... If you take away Tuovasa Shek, Warriors really don't have too much. I mean, they got Nick Arim, they got a few guys who can attack, but Tuovasa Shek is the focal point of their whole attack, defense, everything. He is the Warriors. Well, I know he's the captain, but I think it's not pushed to the front a lot that he literally is the Warriors. It kind of reminds me when Sean Johnson was at the Warriors, although Sean Johnson had Tuovasa Shek at the time when he was at the Warriors, but he had the face of the club, and Tuovasa Shek is that. But not only is he the face of the club, this is where the difference is with Johnson. Johnson was the face of the club. He also had some other good guys around him. So about Shek, like he kind of has a lot of guys who, if they went to other clubs, they probably would be playing reserve grade. But I feel like he ha he's just such a good player that he kind of brings them up. It's not to his level, but he's able to bring them up, get them going. Uh, and whether it's a captaincy thing, whether it's just the fact that he's actually such a good player, I don't know, but I really love Roger Tuvasa Shek. He's a highlights machine. Um, even in the worst years at, of his career, you can look at his seasons, you go, yeah, not a great season, blah, blah, blah. You can still see glimpses of quality. He's kind of like the original Kalen Ponga. He's like the highlights package. If you look at Kalen Ponga, you look at his highlights package, and you would say, wow, this guy is sick. What a great year. Tuvasa Shek was like the originator over that. You looked at his Roosters highlights off the off the wing, he was stepping players with, with like a couple centimeters to work with. He was just he was that sick, and he was like like I said, the total highlights package. Um, he had like Americans watching his videos and just being in awe of this guy's step. But that has translated into the NRL in terms of a couple of years later, where he's he's produced that little bit of ball playing. He's still got the speed. Um, injuries haven't really hampered him. It's just really the only thing that's hampered him is kind of the team he plays at. Now, like I said, if he played at a Sydney club, this guy would literally be the face of the NRL. He'd be He'd be in every advertisement. He'd be up there with Tedesco. And obviously, he is up there with Tedesco in terms of I'm putting him at number two. But I feel like the general public kind of forget about Roger Tuovasa Shek. If you're a casual of the NRL, you don't, I feel like you don't really think of Tuovasa Shek. You think of Tedesco, you think of your Pappenhausens. I mean, you just want a premiership. Trebojevic, he plays for New South Wales. The fact that he's a Kiwi who plays for the Warriors, he's kind of forgotten about until you look at the Warriors who are sort of like sitting in Australia and sort of let the comp go because they're actually willing to go to Australia. That's the only recognition they get, and I feel like they kind of get that sympathy for sort of vote in the sense that not really producing on the field. I mean, they, they are playing above their means, in my opinion, but the same, like, in terms of, I thought they, they would be like a wooden spoon contender side, but they haven't been. But in, in the sense that they're kind of, you know, making up the numbers, like, oh, well, they're playing. If they win a game, that's great. Like, Australia, we love the Warriors. But you don't actually look at the side and you realise... They actually have some really good players. Some guys like Tuovasa Shek, especially Tuovasa Shek, like I said, really, really carries that side. And if you take him out of that side, if he was one of those guys, like your Fusa Tours in that, who was like, I'm not going to play, I'm going to go back to New Zealand, I think the Warriors do get the wooden spoon. 
I know he's the captain. I know it's easy to say because he is the captain. But in just in terms of actual ability on the field, I think you chuck anyone else at fullback. I think the Warriors just absolutely, they just, they just fall over. They just turn styles. That's what it feels like to me. Full fast to check. He just simply doesn't get enough credit because of the team he plays at. And it's funny because the guy we're going to be talking about, number one, plays for his former club. And when he used to be at the Warriors, to have he used to get talked up as this. He was like taking over from Minicello. He was the next best thing. Then he went to the Warriors and it was kind of like, oh, you know, he's all right. Then he won the, the Dally M and it was like, oh, well, does he deserve it? I don't really know. Warriors aren't winning. But like at the same time, if he played any other side and they were getting a couple more wins, you'd look at Tilvar Shek's performances, look at his meetings, look at his stats, and you'd be like, unreal, unreal. He'd be one of those ones like Sonny Bill where you're like, oh yeah, I wish he played, wish he played junior for New South Wales. He could have played for New South Wales. You know what I'm saying? You know the media get absolutely frost that sort of shit, and you, you just know Tuivasa Sheck would have been someone they would have been pushing for New South Wales and talking about how they she should have been playing, playing Origin and all this sort of stuff. But instead, he's at the Warriors. He's kind of taking a back seat to the rest of the NRL. But you know what? Maybe that's not a bad thing for Tuivasa Sheck. Maybe if he'd stayed in Sydney, he would have been off the rails or something like that. I don't. You don't really know. But the Warriors, it does feel right for Roger Tuivasa Sheck. Um, I feel like if you chucked him in a bloody Titans jersey or something, it just it just be weird. It just be absolutely weird. I know they've got Brimson and that, but just in terms of when I think of Tuivasa Sheck, I think of Roosters initially, and I think of the Warriors. Like, I feel like it's kind of similar to Cameron Smith. Like, if all of a sudden we see him in Titans jersey or something, which is a possibility at this point, it just wouldn't feel right. So Tuivasa Sheck at the Warriors definitely feel like it absolutely suits him. But in saying that, though, I mean, if he went to another club, maybe he could have been the number one in this list. Speaking of number one, we're talking about James Tedesco of the Sydney Roosters, of New South Wales, of Australia. I think it's pretty obvious he's going to be the number one fullback in this list. I mean, he's just, he's absolutely outstanding. And even on his average game, I feel like he still leaps and bounds above a lot of the other fullbacks. Now, we've talked about, you know, your Poppenhausens and that sort of stuff. There's guys who are capable of playing some really, really good games. And I think even at their peak, they're not as good as James Tedesco. Tedesco is just on another level. And there's a reason that, that he's talked about as being the best player in the game, despite Dally M's and all that sort of stuff. I mean, look at Dally M's like, oh, Jack White. And no, James Tedesco is 100% the best player in the NRL. Even if he's not as effective as, as he was, say, like last year, or say last year, but like 2019 or whatever, he's still the best player. And even if you argue with him not being the best player, you can at least say he's the best fullback. I mean, what other fullback is genuinely better than him? Um, I was talking about two of us, Sheik, if you're getting the recognition and that. Um, obviously, playing in a Rooster side definitely benefits him. Like, when he was at the Tigers, he was a really good player. I think he'd, he'd actually played for New South Wales at that point. So it's not like he just made his name at the Roosters. He was definitely on track to being this caliber of player. But it does help playing in a Rooster side. It's got so much publicity, so much uh, sort of support in terms of them being one of the better sides. You've got Kiri, you've got all those sort of guys to play with. You're not playing with these bums. It's not like you've just chucked him in uh, like a Bulldog side and then he's just he's playing all right and you're going, oh, well, oh, I don't know, you know, He's not playing that great. Like, he's playing with Kiri. They're winning every game, essentially. And, you know, they're making, you know, nearly making the grand final every year, essentially. It was, they nearly went back to back to back. And that says it all about the Roosters, which also says a lot about James Tedesco, because he's the best player of that side. So as easy as it is to sit here and say that Tedesco benefits from playing for a great side, I think he'd still be classed as the best player. It's just, at the moment, he's just so leaps and bounds ahead of people that it's just, you know, it's just, it kind of, doesn't feel real, but this is legitimately the fact. Tedesco is just so much better than everyone else. And like I was talking about before, I was talking about Tuivasa Sheck. He came from the Roosters, went to the Warriors, and kind of faded out. Maybe Tedesco would go to another team and will fade out as well. We never know, just because it's like we have that recency bias. We're always going to have it. We're always going to look at the last couple of years. And the last couple of years, Tedesco has been the best player. But maybe if he went to a Dragons or something, he'd kind of just fade out. I don't know. Maybe he would. Maybe he just ended up being a Matt Dufty. Maybe, but probably not. I feel like he's cemented himself. And also, he's kind of one of those guys who just have that aura about him. Kind of like a Latron Mitchell, the Greg Inglis, that sort of stuff. When they get the ball, you just... I feel like as an opposition fan, I know when I'm watching my side or if I've got a bet on or something, if Tedesco got the ball, you're like, shit, shut him down. Just shut that shit down straight away. And I feel like when you start getting into that attitude, that just shows how good of a player he is. Because a lot of times you get you play with the ball and you're like, eh, nothing's really going on. But you know Tedesco is fully capable of doing something out of nothing. Doesn't really get hit by injuries too much. Um, you know in the 80th minute, a lot of like the fullbacks and stuff, they're not necessarily the go-to. A lot of the times it's your halfbacks and 5 eights and that sort of stuff. But 
You know, for the Roosters, when they're coming down to the wire and they're looking for something that happened, even New South Wales, and I feel like this is a bigger thing for New South Wales, you look at Tedesco and you go, yep, yeah, he's capable of doing something. He's capable of making an impact. And for the Blues, they really missed him in the back end of that game three um, when he went off injured. And I feel like it's a big reason why they ended up losing because he wasn't there. Um, but yeah, Tedesco for me, number one fullback. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys say in the comments because I feel like there's going to be a lot of people who are saying, oh yeah, this guy should be, Brimson should be, or bloody guys who aren't even on the list, like I said, Brimson, your Pongers and stuff. There's guys who are super popular, but for me, Tedesco, not only is the best fullback, he's the most marketable fullback at this point, most marketable player in the game. And there's a reason why he's getting these plaudits. He's the Australian fullback. Um, it's not for no reason, especially after with him taking over guys like Billy Slater and that. To go to Tedesco, it's not a downgrade at all. I mean, you've got guys like, say like Damian Cook, he's like really, really good. But at the end of the day, he is a downgrade on Cameron Smith. Where Tedesco, he's like an upgrade on Billy Slater. As good as Billy Slater was, Tedesco is just absolutely amazing. But yeah, essentially, I'm just rambling at this point. I'm just talking about how good Tedesco is. But we really knew once we got to the top two, we knew who they were going to be. The rest of the top five, we kind of could get an idea of who they're probably going to be, considering other people's lists and probably what's in your head right now. But leave in the comment section below, who is your top five? Uh, is it similar to mine? Is it completely different? I feel like there's going to be a lot of people who have Gutherson in there. I mean, he did get the, the fullback of the year in the previous Dalian medals. But um, Dalian is so hard to take seriously when you look at the previous ones. I mean, obviously Nathan Clary, in my opinion, was the best player last year. But a lot of people will look at the Dalian and say, oh, well, they should be in the top five list. Um, I've seen a couple other people do it. And that Gutherson was definitely a popular one. But yeah, leave in the comment section below. Who should be in the top five? Who's your top five? Am I wrong? Am I right? Just let me know because I'd love to have a little bit of discussion. I feel like it's always fun to see other people's opinions because I have in my head that like, oh yeah, I've got the right opinion. As everyone does, you're like, oh yeah, I love my opinion. But it's interesting to see other people's opinions, other people's verdicts, um, just perspective. I feel like perspective is a lot of it. Um, you look at other people who are fans of clubs and you can kind of look at them and say, oh yeah, this guy does this and this. I watch him really, really keenly. So I feel like it's kind of cool when you do the top five list um, to have other guys have different opinions to you. So, yeah, like I said, I think it's quite cool. We can have a bit of discussion in the comment section below. But instead of the comments, also you can um, do something on social media as well. You can give me uh, a follow, give me a like, um, at me, uh, tweet me, uh, message me, whatever you want. Have a bit of a chat with me on social media. It's Mr. Luke and YT. My Facebook is also Mr. Luke. But the rest of it is just Mr. Luke and YT, Snapchat included. Go ahead and give me a follow and a like on that. Also, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Uh, it's very essential that you go ahead and turn the notification bell. It lets you be notified immediately that the video has been uploaded because the YouTube description box is absolutely dog shit sometimes. And look, if you missed it on social media, if you're not following me on that, at least you got the notification bell on. So you can go ahead and watch the video straight away rather than wait and see if a video is uploaded. But that's all I gotta say. I'm completely rambling at this point. The video's gone long enough, so let's end this video right now. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more content on the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.